Hi guys, welcome back to our another episode of Globe Interviews. This is Starlight here. Today we have Tokro to come to our podcast. Please welcome Tokro. Hello everyone.、Uh, my name is Tokro. I'm the senior researcher at Scroll. I mostly work on the protocol design and some not really interesting stuff. So, first question I would like to ask:、uh, Can you tell us a bit about yourself and how did you start your crypto journey? Of course, yeah.、Uh, my background is in computer science. I it was I was doing a computer science degree. Like, if, I think it was in twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen, when I first heard about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and I looked into it and I enjoyed the idea of decentralization and how you can actually apply it to the real world instead of just. Be, because before that, distributed systems were just about, let's say.、Uh, De- designing、uh, foolproof systems where you you have a few servers that、uh, that can still function if some of them fail. Whereas this was an actual censorship resistant use case where anybody can do whatever they want,、mm-hmm. and nobody from the outside could dictate what you are and aren't allowed to do. So I was interested、uh, with the concept, and then I started looking into Ethereum and. How Ethereum works, and the 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 idea of smart deploying on smart contracts on a system like that really excited me, and basically I got hooked with 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 Ethereum, and I've spent the last six years working on different design designs. I've I've before I joined Scroll, I used to work on. Privacy preserving protocol、uh, on a privacy preserving protocol,、uh, and but I never left Ethereum f- f- like as a hobby. I always spent a lot of time studying it and、yeah. how you could improve it and stuff like that. And then and I encountered rollups, and I thought the idea of rollups was actually the best I- I- idea in a while that could scale Ethereum and other protocols similar、mm-hmm. to Ethereum. And I just got hooked with rollups, and now I'm here. Oh, that's amazing! Okay, let's talk about the Scroll Tag.、Uh, what does the company do, and what services you guys can offer? So, short answer is we're building a zkVM-based zero knowledge rollup. I know it's a handful, so I'll elaborate on what that means. Rollups on on Ethereum are a way to extend the throughput and the features of Ethereum because. As many of you might know, Ethereum is bounded by a few things that limit the throughput. Hence, why you get so expensive transactions on Ethereum. And、uh, rollups are designed to basically、uh, offload some of those、uh, uh, throughput demands without actually imposing a lot of、uh, additional security assumptions on the users who are using it. So basically, it's it's a way to extend Ethereum's. Throughput without adding a lot of security assumptions on top, making it weaker. And what zkVM means is basically,、uh, oh, and forgot to add,、uh, we are a zero knowledge rollup. So zero knowledge rollup uses、uh, a cryptographic system, family of systems called zero knowledge proofs. And、um, but we use them not to preserve privacy, but because they're small. In terms of、uh, size and verification time, so basically you can prove that you did some computation, and the, the cost of verifying it in terms of time is much smaller than than redoing the execution, which means that we can do a lot of execution off chain, compute、mm-hmm. one validity proof, put it on chain, and it's going to be relatively cheap to verify, instead of re-executing all those transactions. And zk EVM is an implementation of EVM that can be proven inside a zero knowledge proof. So essentially, you execute an Ethereum smart contract, prove the correctness of of the transaction that executed that smart contract, and put the validity proof on chain. What does a crypto researcher do, and what excites you like working the、um, crypto industry? That's an interesting question because.、Uh, I do a lot of different stuff, but I'm mostly focused on the protocol design. So let's say decentralization and how、mm-hmm. you handle upgradeability, and also how you handle the communication between a rollup and Ethereum. That's my main concern. But I also help out with other stuff, 
like uh, incentives and sometimes i help review uh the the implementations of of uh, the smart contracts that allow the bridge to communicate with the roll up to communicate with ethereum mm -hmm. what excites me the most that's also a difficult question because there are a lot <laughs> of exciting things in crypto uh i don't know i, I would say the the idea that especially since the whole turnout of cash thing happened i think the idea that you can have censorship resistant actively uh, censorship resistant systems while powerful governments are trying to shut you down it's, it's just exciting because that means that not even the most powerful person on the planet or organization on the planet can't shut you down which i think is something important because if we were to apply the laws and regulations of every single country out there the 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 the, the feature set of what smart contracts would be able mm -hmm. to do would decrease drastically and therefore it's important that uh, the underlying protocol remains censorship resistant and no government can impact what it's allowed to do and what's it not what it's not allowed to do Being a researcher, what do you think uh, is important to you when you work your uh, with your team? I think an important thing that you have to you have to be open minded because as a researcher, you, you need to absorb other ideas and uh, thoughts of other people. Mm -hmm. And if and if you can't do that, that means that you'll never gonna progress because let's say if you're convinced that a certain feature is great and everything else is bad uh you're never going to improve because uh you're just going to be stuck with that particular feature so yeah. i think the most important thing is open-mindedness but there's there are also other things for example you need to be able to collaborate with other people because unlike what a lot of people assume science is a very collaborative field i know a lot of people hear about einstein da vinci i think and think that they they are these these lone wolves that just driven the whole field by themselves but in reality it's tens sometimes hundreds sometimes thousands yeah. of different scientists collaborating and discussing oh, yeah. things and and working towards the same goal together so i think those two things are the most important collaboration and open-mindedness Yeah, for sure. You have to see the things in different perspective and have to learn like a different fields, knowledge and do a lot of research as well. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. If you just stick to one thing and never look mm -hmm. at what other people are doing, you're just going to be stuck mm -hmm. forever, basically. Yeah, you're stuck in the same bubble. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What separates Squirrel Tact from the other competitors in terms of uh, creation, innovation, value, and something like that? So I think what separates us from uh, other protocols that are building similar things are a few things. So one, we have been open source from the very beginning. So everything we do is public. So anybody is welcome to go review it and uh propose changes and help us build stuff so we don't hide anything essentially and another thing is our specific implementation of zkvm is being worked together with ethereum foundation and our goal is to be as close to ethereum as possible on the protocol level so i think our main advantage is that both from the developer and from the user perspective The goal is to be as similar to Ethereum as possible. So the user and the developer is abstracted from the fact that they're using scroll rather than Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And the experience is identical. And be because our, our, in our opinion, uh, EVM is a gold standard and it's unlikely to be, be, be succeeded by some other VM anytime soon. Uh, the advantage is specifically because so so the most amount of developers in the, in the in the field have access to the most ethereum like environment while still being uh, retaining the security of ethereum or most of the security of ethereum 
Do you think、um, the company has a lot of competitors? The good things or is the bad things? I think monopolies are not great because. Both from the user perspective and from the、mm-hmm. technology perspective, because if you don't have any competitors, there's、mm-hmm. no incentive for you to work hard and improve and work on the best user experience you can. So, and especially in our field, because it's a brand new field and we don't know what's going to happen in five, ten years. So、oh, yeah. uh, it's good. It's good to see what other people are working on. In case we can borrow something from them, or they can borrow something from us, and basically bring the whole field forward, rather than just us being like, "Oh yeah, guys, we have this thing, and we don't really do need to do anything with it because we're the only ones doing it." So, like,、uh, competitors can force the industry to develop faster. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean. Look at look at how the field improved even in the last three four years because、mm-hmm. because everyone's nudging it, each other to do better. We have、uh, an abundance of research and abundance of、uh, different experimentations going on. Yeah, in different protocols. Could you share with us the remarkable achievement that Squirrel Tech has made so far? I think、uh, a remarkable achievement, and it's, it doesn't only apply to scroll; it applies to all the zero knowledge rollups. But I'll clarify why it apl- applies to scroll specifically later. So,、uh, essentially, three years ago, four years ago, the idea of proving the the correctness of execution inside a zero knowledge proof was a fan fiction. It was nobody would have thought that we would have been here. Discussing an actual implementation, a working implementation, in such a short amount of time. So I think it's remarkable、uh, the fact that the field in general has progressed so fast that we're at a stage where we actually have、uh, validity proofs that can prove the correctness of arbitrary execution working on chain. So Starknet is essentially already live, and we are launching our pre-alpha testnet this week. Or, or in, in 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 the coming few days. So,、uh, and for us specifically, that was a difficult part. And a more、mm-hmm. difficult thing to do was specifically implement EVM inside a circuit because EVM is not very zero knowledge proof friendly. So, it introduces a lot of problems that, for example, Starkware doesn't have. And therefore, I think it's really remarkable the fact that. Us and a few other protocols have managed to implement a working v- version of, of bytecode equivalent Ethereum implementation. For us, it's a bit more nuanced, but let's just stay on the byte equivalent bytecode <laughs> equivalents because I can ramble about it forever. That's great. Okay.、Um, what's the mission and the vision of the Squirrel Tag? Can you share with us? I think、uh, the main mission is to help Ethereum grow,、mm-hmm. because、uh, at the current pace, Ethereum is limited to how many users it can onboard. So, I, I, I wouldn't want to use words like、uh, achieve, uh, help Ethereum onboard the next billion, because I'm not sure if <laughs>、uh, the technology is yet there that we can.、Uh, Onboard the next billion, but definitely help Ethereum onboard a significantly bigger amount of users that it currently、yeah. has. Because so essentially, let's let's say in the US, an average user can afford to pay a few dollars for transaction, but the majority of the world can't do that. Like there are countries where people earn that much per hour,、yeah. hour or、yeah. per day. So it's it would be ridiculous for them to pay that much for a Uniswap transaction. Say、mm-hmm. so so. Ethereum is kind of segregated in this Western part of the world, like the rich part of the world, where where those users can freely use it, but、mm-hmm. then it's unaffordable for everybody else. And therefore, rollups allow users to experience Ethereum without paying the the fees that are required to use Ethereum currently. I think that's a very important step forward, and also、yeah. doing that while being. Open source and community friendly, so being、uh, designed in a way where users are welcome to come and help improve us, 
I think that's what the mission and the vision is. And it also allows you to get uh, a lot of a lot more experimentation going because mm-hmm. currently in Ethereum, you can't really implement stuff that is very expensive to use because yeah. nobody's going to use it. And therefore, rollups allow you users to uh, and developers to experiment with stuff, implement stuff that is more complex or implement stuff that wouldn't really work on Ethereum itself. Much has、uh, changed in the last several years for cryptocurrency, including the growing awareness by、um, institutional brokers, regulators, and currency traders. So,、uh, what challenges do you think the cryptocurrency will face in the future? I think、uh, uh, active censorship from different governments is going to be the biggest challenge, and regulations、yeah. are going to be the biggest challenge to the industry. How do you navigate? Your way to success without being blacklisted in the U.S. Let's say that 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 would be, I think, the biggest challenge that crypto is going to face and that it has ever faced. Because before now, everything was smooth sailing. As long as you didn't do anything that was like apparently、uh, like indisputably wrong, you didn't really have a lot of issues. And I think. What happened last week with Tornado Cash is just a precursor of what what the governments are gonna try and impose on cryptocurrencies and the distributed systems in general. So I think th- that will be the biggest challenge that we have ahead of us for the next few years. Okay, so the last questions, but not least,、uh, where do you see yourself in the next five coming years? Oh,、uh, I, I, it's it's quite a loaded question because it's difficult to predict the future. But but like it, it, if I was to be optimistic,、uh, I would I would say that from from the perspective of scroll, it would be helping Ethereum onboard as many users、mm-hmm. as,、uh, as possible. And from the personal perspective, it would be helping improve Ethereum because there are still a lot of、uh, unanswered questions and there are a lot of places. Inside the Ethereum protocol, that can be improved and made better. So I think, from a personal perspective, that that would be my goal. And then for us as an organization, it would be to help users、mm-hmm. ha- experience Ethereum and use it in their daily lives. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. If you liked the content, please like, comment, and subscribe our channel as well. And thank you for coming to our、uh, channel today. And it's my pleasure to speaking with you. Thanks for inviting me, and it was a pleasure talking to you. And hopefully, we'll speak more in the future. Yeah, for sure. I will see you guys next time. Bye.